and gents all right that's exactly what happened to many of us i killed i bricked my infotainment system on my 2016 mazda cx5 as you can see it's completely black well the radio still works at least one station not the worst one it's good but the rest doesn't work at all uh you're wondering why it happened yeah you know there are many many reasons why it happened like the, the in my case it was just well stupidity yes i did a stupid thing basically i decided to upgrade my system to the newest version and i had like a very very old version so to update to a new one i had to install the intermediate one I believe it is 70.100 something like that and it comes in two parts the fail safe and the reinstall part so I was uh, lazy and I didn't read or watch enough information so for some reason I decided to install the first part and turn the car off and then come back and install the second part I don't know why I did it don't ask me but I did it so I installed the first part, everything went very well, I left the car, I closed it, I came back and here it goes, now it's completely black. So again, it can happen to many reasons, but usually it's just an error in an upgrade or people's stupidity like in my case or I don't know, anything. And uh, you probably have read horror stories on the internet already. Oh my god, this is so difficult to fix. This is dead. It's gonna cost you tons of money. And uh, if you do it by yourself, it's almost impossible and blah, 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 blah. Ladies and gents, don't trust this stuff. This is actually not that difficult to fix at all. And you don't need a lot of money for that. Well, you don't have to be an electrical engineer or a computer guy or anything like that. Trust me, if you can do this, your friend, your lover, the friend of your lover, your boyfriend, anybody, there is a person who can help you do that. So don't rush into a dealer because if you go to a dealer, they'll probably tell you, hey, it's dead. They're going to replace the whole unit and it's going to cost you around a thousand bucks, I think. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to actually fix it because after researching some internet, I read some articles, but I didn't see any videos, people actually doing it. The most difficult part here, I would say, is to remove the system itself. Well, I wouldn't say it's too difficult because uh, you know, there are plenty of videos on YouTube how to do that. Basically, you unsnap the stream, and uh, unscrew a couple of bolts and remove the system. I'm not gonna go into details because there are plenty of videos on the topic. And ah, uh, yeah, by the way, if you are thinking of installing Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, this is a good time for you to install it. So, but bear in mind that you will not be able to run Android Auto or Apple CarPlay without actually purchasing Janine mazda hardware kit hardware upgrade kit so if you break your system and you are thinking of installing the android auto or apple CarPlay, this is a good time so let's just get to business and get this stuff fixed 
So as I mentioned, you basically start with uh, removing the trim kit. Get something like this plastic prior tool, or you can use a screwdriver. But just don't make sure you don't scratch your trim. You basically pry it like so. Ah, it's a little difficult to film and do it at the same time. So you see, and then you kind of unsnap it. Here we go. Okay, be careful here because there is a connector in here. Don't just slam it on your dashboard. You can damage the connector. Okay, then you just unsnap this trim. Again, it's not that difficult as you can see. I can even do it with one hand. It just pulls right out. Well, I forgot to say, Mazda, you're actually really stupid. When you created the upgrade process and called it fail safe, I don't know, maybe some intern developed that process for you, but it's not fail safe at all. If it's so easy to break, then I wouldn't call it fail safe. Well, I hope you fixed it in your newest upgrades because the newest upgrade comes in just one file. But anyway, so that's how it looks after we unsnapped a couple of trims. There is one bolt here, one bolt here, and another bolt somewhere over there. We're gonna unscrew them and remove the whole unit. Here it goes. Okay, that's another bolt. Here we go. That one might be a little bit trickier because you'll need something longer like that. Almost there. Okay, here we go. Be careful because you might drop your screw in this hole as actually happened to me i dropped my wrench socket and there i will have to fish it from there but i'll deal with it later so all the screws are unscrewed let's remove this bad boy as you can see this whole thing just slides out there are some connectors on the back of the unit just unplug them all and uh, remove the whole unit So here it goes, ladies and gents. The whole procedure probably took me, I would say, maybe five minutes. And you have your unit out. That's how it looks like. Like made in China. Maybe that's why it broke. <laughs> All right, let's get it fixed. Okay. The tools you need for this job is uh, obviously a computer. Don't get scared now. You will do minimal stuff with a computer. I would recommend getting a Windows computer. I've heard that there are issues with uh, Macs. So for you Apple lovers, if you really want to use your Mac computer, use it on your own risk. Don't tell me you break anything. It might work, it might not work, but I've heard there are issues. So. Just get an old computer, old Windows computer, it doesn't have to be powerful, it can be 2010 or something, borrow it, I don't know, pull it from your basement, but my recommendation is use the Windows device. You will need a couple of uh, electronic devices. I bought them on Amazon, as you can see, you can bought them on eBay and they will actually be cheaper, but the shipping, uh, shipping actually was free, but the shipping time was like I don't know a month because they will be shipped from China so I didn't bother they're not that expensive as you can see so you will need the USB programmer I use the one based on CH341 alpha chip as you can see it's only nine bucks on Amazon uh, by the way I'll, th I'll throw the link 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'll throw the links up in the description below if you want to purchase the same stuff I bought. I'm not being sponsored by these guys, so don't worry about it. And you will need the test clip, SLP16 clip. This is the guy. This is the programmer itself. As you can see, I haven't even opened it. You will need a star bit because, as you can see, there are star screws in here. And a little bit of patience. This whole process looks intimidating, probably, but trust me, it is not. I'll, I'll probably keep repeating it. This is actually very, very easy. Just bear with me and we'll get it done. So I removed all these screws, but there is actually one more screws right there. So we'll need to remove this whole box by undoing a couple screws here and a couple screws here. go now this thing just be careful there is a connector in there just be careful I don't know maybe ah, I'll just leave it there just need to unplug this connector it might be a little tricky there is a tab or snap or clip underneath so but you can stick a screwdriver kind of pop it up and it's gonna slide out pretty easy and I can just take the whole board out just be careful not to damage any surface Technically, you can remove this whole piece, unbolt those screws, couple of screws there, but it's not really necessary. All we need is just to remove this board. You see, it's it's not that difficult. So let's take this back aside for now. We don't need it. We've got everything we need. So the only thing we, we have left is to plug in this bad boy into the computer, install some drivers and connect this board to the computer. Uh, a little bit of history, what has happened actually. This chip is basically used to, for booting sequence. When your system starts up, it sends the commands like, hey, let's start up. When we upgrade the system, 
this chip gets upgraded with the right sequence. So if something happens to upgrade or we stop the upgrade or we messed it up, this chip get, gets corrupted and that's why your system is not booting up. You don't really have to know this, but just for the sake of it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with like physical electronic part. It's just the programming of the chip itself. Like it's the same as the BIOS chip in a computer. If you've ever messed with BIOS, if you've ever upgraded BIOS, that's what it does. So to fix our issue, we should actually change some software on this chip by using this bad boy and this cable. Again, I'm going to say it again and again, this is not difficult. You don't have to be a programmer. So let's just do this. Okay, how this thing works. So basically it's a very simple USB programmer. What it does, it takes the program from the computer and sends it to the chip. Like again, the same thing when you're upgrading a BIOS in your laptop or desktop. So we need to connect this chip to the computer somehow. For this thing, you need this COSC, whatever it's called, 16 adapter. Snap this guy in here, like so. Here we go. And then connect it to the device. But first we need to install the programmer on our computers. This jumper, don't mess with it. Make sure it, it is on pin 1 and 2. If it's somewhere here, somewhere here, somewhere here, change it to here. Because this is needed to install drivers in your computer. Otherwise, you will not be able to install the drivers. So, let's plug it in. Okay. To install the drivers. Ah, by the way, all this software you can find in the link down below for your convenience and I uploaded it to my drive, but you can just Google it and it, it's easily available on the internet. So to install the drivers, you hit driver 24CX25 file. If it doesn't work by any chance, you can try the other one. This one is specifically for 64-bit systems, but this is a generic driver and usually should work. So here you go, click yes, install, driver install success, okay. Then to start the program, you'll just hit this icon right there. I don't know if you can see it. Once again, this is the driver installation. You hit it first, install the driver, then to run the program, you just hit, hit it like so. And here we go. To make sure that the driver installed correctly, You see it says device state connected. So we installed all the necessary driver and ready to do the magic. Okay, one more thing. So you can see the icon, you can see this little dot in there. Yeah, it's basically telling you how how to install your chip because technically that's pin number one that's the orientation of pin number one so on the chip you see the same pin it's right here so basically you should orient it like so but if you install it if you 
if you install it incorrectly it's just not gonna work you can basically swap the leads and the opposite position position it's in it should work it's not gonna hurt your chip or anything but you want to make it right so do it right in the first time okay how we actually connect our device to the board and the computer so usually these programmers and adapters come with the various adapters so after playing around, I actually realized that I don't need this connector, but actually I need this one. So what it does, it techni uh, technically converts 16 pins connected to the 8 pins needed for programming. The crucial part here is to install it correctly. As I mentioned, you see this uh, magneto color? This is your pin number one. So this wire should correspond to pin number one in here. It's actually right there. Right here is the pin number one. Remember the dot on the chip I was talking about? I'll get it closer. So here pin number one for the chip this is pin number one on the connector we're gonna connect it like so here we go fire up the program and what I was talking about, I hope the camera translates it properly. This little dot, that's where your pin number one should be. So basically, our chip, our converted eight pins should be connected right here. So here it goes. Pin number one. Again, on the top. It goes on the top. Like that. Ah, I'm sorry. Like that. And close it very gently. And close it. Now we can connect our device to the computer. Here it goes. It says device, it says device connected. And we can actually read the chip right now. You see this menu? Chip, search, detect. If it, he detect, you see? Here is our chip, our chip information. You basically don't need all that stuff, but if you want to play around, you can do that. Okay, we got everything connected. We have our program running. Now we can read the data. A good idea here is to create a copy of your chip. It's not necessary, you can always find a copy of the chip on the internet or any other places, but just for the sake of it. So first we can read the chip by hitting the read button. As you can see it's reading. It should take maybe a minute or so. Here we go. And we're gonna save it. Save it. I'll just call it backup. Backup. Okay, 
So now we have two options. Uh, but first of all, a little bit of history. What what actually happened? So this whole code, as you can see, all this programming garbage in here. That's what's get loaded to the chip. That's what tells the chip what actually to do and how to start the system. So somewhere in this code, something changed. And now the system sees the code and says, hey, I don't understand what, I don't understand it. And he just stops. Okay, and we're gonna fix it now. So here is our file again. As you can see, there is a bunch of garbages here. You don't have to worry about it. After you read your chip, hit the verify button, just in case to make sure everything is loaded correctly. As you can see, it's verifying right now. Here we go. Everything looks fine. It says chip and buffer the same, we can proceed. So what are we gonna do right now? We're basically gonna change a byte and offset this number from FF to 00. So just control C, here hit control G, or you can just go data buffer go to enter that address here we go as you can see it's blinking and we have f f f f f everywhere so you don't have to know again all these details but what it does this is a boot command so by changing it to zeros we just kind of go full the system and prevent it from uh, proceeding to the our upgrade procedure basically when we started upgrading some error happened but this boot sector got recorded anyway so the system is not allowed to proceed so by do, by changing it to zero basically full in the system creating an mistake uh, an error and the system is just gonna stop telling us hey we, i can't upgrade something is wrong all right now we can save this file okay i'm gonna just send i'm just gonna call it let's call it mazda backup modify it I'm gonna include this file for download you can just down probably download it and upload it by yourself or you can just do what I just did it's very easy just change it to all zeros and hit save all right we are good to go now we need to write all that stuff back to the chip to do that first we need to erase everything from the chip because otherwise we're not gonna be able to change anything so just hit erase you see it happened pretty fast chip erased completed let's read it first here we go so as you can see our chip is completely blank we have FFFFFs everywhere that means it's completely empty and ready to be programmed. Again, uh, erasing the chip before writing anything to it is a crucial task, so do it first, then read the chip again, and now we can start programming. To program, let's just open our file, our modified file we just saved. Call it Mazda Backup Modified. Here is our file, as you can see it has bunch of stuff in there and hit program button here we go the programming started it should take 
I would say a few minutes and we'll be ready to go. So our programming is finished. We can double check it. Just hit the read button again to make sure everything got recorded. Let's check our offset address. You see everything is right, they have zeros everywhere. And at uh, this moment we are done. So let's put all that stuff back into the car and check it out. You can safely actually, you can safely unplug the device now, there is nothing to it. Okay, as you can see, I put my unit back in and ready to test the system. It should give us, it should turn on and give us an error now. Here we go, we've got something. Okay, I have a, my trusty USB drive where I downloaded all the software. Let me close this door. It drives me nuts. So, if you are, just on a side note, if you are upgrading from a version 56 or 59, you'll have to go to version 7100, I believe. The one that consists of two parts. And then, you will be able to upgrade to the latest one, whatever the latest one is at this moment. All right, I turned off the car completely now. I'm gonna put my USB drive Here we go, let's start it again. Here we go. So that's the software you should upgrade from an older version, 70.00.100. Reinstalling the package. So far, so good. Just wait, don't do anything, don't touch any controls, don't turn on or off anything, just patiently wait till the upgrade process finishes. It's gonna take a while, it will take I don't know, maybe 10-15 minutes, but at the end we should have our working system again, full upgraded and ready to go. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, maybe more, and it's like 120 degrees in the car, and I'm still waiting, waiting, and waiting. So just be patient. Don't think it's frozen, don't think you did something wrong, just wait, keep waiting. As an advice, keep your windows open, or do it when it's cool outside. But we're almost there. We're 
always heard that uh, it has some kind of timer built in, so it's gonna reset every 15 minutes. So it's a good idea to press the brake brake pedal if you have automatic or clutch pedal, I believe, if you have a uh, manual. Otherwise, it's gonna start over again. Oh, it changed. We have 4% left. Come on. Almost there. Almost there. Come on, baby. Come on. You can do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it takes a while. Be patient, ladies and gents. Be patient. Here we go. 100% ready. Software install was successful. Please restart the vehicle for changes take effect. The moment we've been waiting for. It's doing something. We see the logo. Here we go! Everything seems to be working. Let's check the version. System about version here we go. So we have a version 70.100. They suggest uh, to drive the vehicle to operate like navigation, radio, and stuff like that before upgrading to the latest version. So I'm gonna give it for uh, I'm gonna give it a quick spin and then I'm gonna install the latest version, put all the screws back together. And have fun have a beer so as you can see ladies and gents it wasn't that bad we have our working system back we saved about thousand bucks and we had some fun I hope this video helped somebody and uh, good luck so as you can see ladies and gentlemen the whole process wasn't that difficult the only tools you really needed in this small programmer as I said you can easily buy it either from directly from China it's gonna probably cost you five dollars with shipping included make sure you have this adapter that converts 16 pins to 8 pins you will use to stick in a programmer and this pair of clips you connect this adapter to. I purchased all this stuff on Amazon. All the links are included down below because I didn't really want to wait and the price wasn't that bad. I think I paid around $25 or so for all this stuff. And uh, you need a Windows computer and a free software. That's it. Nothing difficult, completely doable completely manageable but on a side note if for some reason you feel this process looks very difficult to you or if you break something if you do something wrong I cannot be responsible for any procedure it did this is strictly an informative video this is not an advice this is what helped me this is what I personally did and I think this process can help others but again for, if for some reason you do something stupid and break your system i cannot be held responsible for anything having said that i wish you all luck have fun 
practice and never give up have a good day hello again ladies and gents it's a bonus for this video and to see to show that everything actually worked fine i decided to include the upgrade process to the newest software as you can see i already put my baby back in one piece and uh, he probably read about how to upgrade it so there is nothing special you press the ignition button once it put it it puts it in a service mode then you press mute volume uh, favorites and music at the same time it's gonna give you this screen here you enter two first enter clear 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 then you hit three enter there are no active DTCs clear and uh, the official manual suggests that you exit from here I think turn the ignition off completely take your key fob leave the car and go at least five meters from the car so basically it's gonna put the CMU in complete sleep uh, I, again I don't think it's necessary but I'm just following the instruction to be safe and so I'll be back in about five minutes okay I am back into the car I put the up, uh, upgrade package on the flash drive the newest one I believe it's 352 something or whatever it is we'll see so to start the process Again, I'll repeat it. Just press the push button once to put it in the service mode. Wait till it loads. Some direction says you should put it in the music mode, radio mode. I don't think it's necessary, but just do it. Again, press uh, volume, favorites and music. Hold it for about three seconds or so until you see the screen now press nine nine enter insert your USB drive and just hit search okay as you can see we have a bunch of packages here these two we have already installed so this is the newest one as of today 367 click on it install and wait again the, the whole process is gonna take about 20 30 minutes so just be patient and uh, press the brake or clutch button maybe every 10 or 15 minutes or so because as i mentioned earlier there is a timer that's gonna reset the upgrade process every 15 minutes and depending on your cmu and the uh, version of your computer you, if you have the latest version it should take faster I believe but anyway just in case press those pedals make sure I have something cold because it's too goddamn hot right now I don't know if you can see but it basically says updating the software once every 20 minutes you must step on the brake pedal or clutch pedal or open and close the driver's door do not press any push button 
uh, do not press the push button start. So yeah, basically what I meant before, what I said before, the whole process is gonna take about 30 minutes, but make sure you press the pedal every 15, 20 minutes or so. Okay. So we are 80% through. Almost there. Still working strong. Here we go. Please turn ACC off and on again. Changes to take effect. So ladies and gents, as you can see, we can uh, we have a fully functional Mazda system updated to the newest version. Everything went fine. I don't really know what Mazda upgraded in their software because everything looks the same. It's probably as slow as it used to be. Draw it out or Apple CarPlay, you're gonna see it here, but since I didn't bother installing it, I've got nothing. And let's check the software version once again. Go to system, about, version, here we go. The latest, latest failsafe version 70.00.367. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.